This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1555. What to do if you can't afford to pay your bills by Kamiko of thebudgetmom.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This is the show where I narrate posts from a wide variety of personal finance blogs. We cover so much on this show, from saving to investing to debt reduction and more. So thank you for joining me today and every day. This show is actually one of six shows in our network covering different topics like personal development, health, and relationships. So if you like narration-style podcasts, be sure to search for Optimal Living Daily wherever you're hearing this and check out our other shows. But for now, let's get right to today's post and start optimizing your life. What to do if you can't afford to pay your bills by Kamiko of thebudgetmom.com. Many people are struggling financially thanks to the coronavirus pandemic. Even if you're fortunate enough to be in good health, your life may be affected in other ways, especially where money's concerned. If you're worried about how you'll keep up with all of your financial obligations right now, you're not alone. A recent survey by US News & World Report found that almost 60% of Americans have financial concerns thanks to the coronavirus pandemic. The good news is that you do have options if a job loss or income reduction is making it hard to keep up with your bills. There are steps you can take right now to give yourself more control over your financial situation. Create a bare bones budget. Tracking your spending is a critical step to managing your finances at any time, especially when money is tight. If you wanna create a budget that can help carry you through a difficult time, you must be honest with yourself and know where you're spending money now. It's wise to begin creating a bare bones budget by first evaluating every one of your expenses. Then you're gonna wanna go through all of them and take one of the following three actions. Number one, keep the expense. Number two, lower the expense. Or number three, cut the expense. When working with a reduced income, it's wise to cut expenses and negotiate lower bills. Many financial tools can help you with this process. For example, you may wanna check out Gabby, an online home and auto insurance comparison site, and Ibotta, an app that can help lower your grocery bills. Remember, it's also okay to adjust your financial goals right now if you need to. It might not be possible to save or pay down debt as quickly as you were a few months ago. When you put yourself on a bare bones budget and only spend money on the essentials, every dollar you save can be added into an emergency fund. Consolidate your debts. One smart way to lower your expenses is to consider consolidating high interest debts like credit cards at a more affordable interest rate. Remember to research your options as not everything that's advertised will be right for you. However, some consolidation options might save you money and potentially improve your credit at the same time. Number one, balance transfer credit cards allow you to potentially move all of your outstanding credit card debt to a single account. If you have good credit, you may be able to qualify for a credit card with an introductory APR of 0%. Of course, the low introductory APR won't last forever, so it's generally best to pay down the debt as quickly as you can. Moving your credit card debt to an account with a lower interest rate may reduce the amount of your minimum monthly payment. If you're struggling to get by financially, paying at least the minimum can help you protect your credit score for the time being. Personal loans, like the loans you find from Credible, offer another potential solution if you're looking to consolidate and reduce the amount of interest you pay on your debts. Again, if you have good credit, you'll be more likely to qualify for this type of financing and to be eligible at a better rate. When you combine multiple high interest debts, like credit cards, into a new personal loan with a lower interest rate, you could save a considerable amount of money over the life of the loan. You may also lower the size of your monthly payment and make it easier to keep up with your bills until you can replace lost income. Talk to your creditors. If all else fails and you still have more bills than income at the moment, don't forget that you can reach out to the people you owe money to each month. Many banks, lenders, creditors, and utility companies are offering COVID-19 hardship assistance during this time to people who can't afford to keep up with their bills. Most companies are not offering forgiveness, so you'll still have to pay these bills at some point in the future. Some lenders are tacking deferred payments onto the end of the loan, while other creditors and utility providers may expect you to make up your missed payments sooner. 
It's essential to get the details upfront before you commit to any type of hardship payment agreement. Here's the best part. If a creditor agrees to modify your payment, known as an accommodation, the new CARES Act passed by Congress protects your credit. As long as you weren't past due before the payment accommodation started, the creditor must continue reporting your account as on time to the three credit bureaus, which are Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. It's also a good idea to keep an eye on your credit reports to make sure your lenders and creditors don't accidentally report you as late. Keep in mind, these free reports won't let you monitor your credit scores, so you'll need to visit other websites if you wanna track those important numbers too. Some of my favorite free resources for monitoring your credit scores include Credit Karma, which offers free weekly credit reports and scores, Vantage Score 3.0, from TransUnion and Equifax and Experian, which offers free monthly Experian credit reports and scores, which is a FICO 8 score. This is only temporary. It's understandable to feel stressed out if you're having trouble paying your bills during the pandemic, but remember that you have options and this is only temporary. Stay mentally dedicated to your long-term financial plans, but don't feel bad if you need to tweak your budget in the meantime to survive the storm. You just listened to the post titled, What to Do If You Can't Afford to Pay Your Bills by Kamiko of TheBudgetMom.com. In 2021, a truly diversified portfolio needs more than a traditional mix of stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. It needs private real estate. Studies have shown that portfolios with an allocation to private real estate generally delivered a better risk-adjusted return with more annual income and lower volatility over the past two decades thanks to its track record of consistent performance through multiple market cycles. With Fundrise, this level of powerful diversification is now available to you. Fundrise provides access to diversified portfolios of private real estate to all investors with their industry-leading, easy-to-use platform. Fundrise's team of real estate professionals carefully vets and actively manages all of their real estate projects. And with their easy to use website, you can track your portfolio's performance and watch as properties across the country are acquired, improved, and operated via dynamic asset updates. Fundrise makes investing in private real estate as easy as investing in stocks, bonds, or mutual funds. See for yourself how 150,000 investors have built a better portfolio with private real estate. It takes just a few minutes to get started. Go to fundrise.com slash OFD today. That's F-U-N-D-R-I-S-E dot com slash O-F-D. Fundrise dot com slash O-F-D. I thought this article had some good ideas on how to approach financials when times are tight. I like the advice for creating a bare bones budget and the reminder to closely track expenses. I know many people don't enjoy tracking expenses, but I personally find it comforting seeing that I can not only develop a budget, but also engage with it and stick to it builds confidence that I can and will meet my financial goals. Awareness is really the first step in moving your finances in the right direction and having a good grip on your needs and spending habits and monitoring them closely is something absolutely within your control. I've noticed that the simple act of tracking spending has a tendency to help me spend less because I'm more thoughtful about spending when I'm writing everything down. I also liked the reminder here that this situation is temporary. I think it's really important to keep a positive mindset when financials are tight. And remember that this is figure outable. The habits you're building right now with your money are going to serve you very well in the long run. And even if you're not experiencing a loss of income right now, it's really helpful to experiment with some self-imposed restriction from time to time. We're all bound to have to navigate tight finances at some point. So when you build up these skills before you actually need them, you'll be much more confident in your ability to deal with tough financial times. That'll do it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in tomorrow's show where your optimal life awaits.